Which free agents can teams least afford to lose? We're examining the AFC today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day. And a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Joe, uh, I'm going to have some self-awareness here. We have 16 teams to do. Yep. And I know how that usually goes for us on the show. We like to talk. We like to provide the insight. And uh, as a result, we also have to try to keep it to about a half an hour discussion. So... Why don't we dive right in today? Yeah. Happy, happy Wednesday, happy hump day, happy yes, last yes, day of January person. to you. Yeah, all that. Um, one step closer to the league calendar year starting, right? Yeah. You know, there, there's two teams that still have to play football game, but nevertheless, the rest of us are looking at was it March 16th? I think somewhere in there, somewhere, somewhere in, there. in that general ballpark is when the the next wave starts. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of draft conversation going on today and this week with the Shrine Bowl and the Senior Bowl, but we are going to keep it focused on some free agent discussion. We're starting the AFC West with the free agent player pending that each team can least afford to lose, in our opinions. The one. Good conversations. The one. The one, right? That's what makes this really compelling is which one player. And we'll start with a very, very challenging team to pick the One player, the Kansas City Chiefs, have got some big names, Kyle Krabs. I'm guessing we're deciding between Chris Jones and LeJarrius Sneed here. Where do you go? I think I go with the corner. I'm going to be honest. He's a younger player. He's 27 versus Chris Jones would be 30. Um, You probably get him for cheaper, so I think it gives you more flexibility. Uh, I think about the decision that this team made moving on from a marquee player in Tyree Kill. And... um, Sneed is uh, an outstanding talent. And I think I would want the player that I feel like gives me the larger uh, remaining peak of play. And while Chris Jones is, you know, the interior defensive lineman can play at a high level into their 30s and kind of 30 is considered the wall for corners. 30 versus 27 this upcoming season is a big difference for me. I put Legereus Sneed down as well. And I thought yeah. maybe I thought maybe you disagree there, but we see it similarly. I think the reality here is the Chiefs have over $70 million in available cap space. So they're probably going to be okay to bring them both back. But you already went through this with Chris Jones where you really couldn't agree on a on a deal. Um, and so I just feel like it's the path is more clear for Legereus Sneed. And what he does to take away number one receivers is yeah. Is as high of a level as any player in the league right now. And that's so much of what the identity of what this Chiefs defense is. So I'm with you on Sneed. The loss. A- oh, you're going Raiders? Okay. Raiders. Let's let's give our respect to the Raiders. All right. Finish second in this division, right? They did. So um I have Andre James the center down. I know Josh Jacobs is kind of the marquee player played on the franchise tag this Don't year. Don't care. I I'm yeah. I'm not particularly interested in in paying that kind of contract to to Josh Jacobs. Yeah, Josh Jacobs is the biggest name, but no. Nah. Like Andre James has been a nice developed player for you that stabilized your center, and they've got other interior offensive linemen, Greg Van Roten, who will wind up being a pretty decent starter for them this year. Jermaine Illuminar at right tackle, but to me, keep that center in place. And I think the good thing here about the Raiders is that it's not an overwhelming list. They got some. Yeah. Some contributors for sure, but I think the most important one is Andre James. Yeah, I think Kansas City certainly has a more imposing decision if you were to pick only one. Uh, I think the Broncos are another team that's pretty straightforward. Who needs to be brought back? And it's 
one of their five cornerstones on an offensive line that got a ton of play together this past year in Lloyd Cushenberry. That would be my choice for if you could only bring back one free agent off the expiring list. Center Lloyd Cushenberry played 99% of the snaps, 27 years old. Uh, solid, rock solid player in the middle of the offensive line. Saw it the same way. So we go three for three with agreeing on who the guy is. And it's funny, this division has two centers here that are really important for, I think, each team to bring back. And I remember as we were doing the um, the the pitches to fix the franchises, I found myself seeing a lot of need at center for those yeah. teams. And I talked a lot about they should sign Andre James or Lloyd Cushenberry. Yeah. Well, the reality is so should the Raiders and Broncos and not let these guys touch the market and and for those teams that are hopeful to get one of those two guys like we talked about yesterday the draft looks like it's going to be pretty nice with some young center talent uh to to be mindful of there so yeah i'm with you on lloyd cushionberry and he's also like known for his leadership as well and that's what you want out of your center a glue guy for your offensive line How about the chargers you know who this is man it's a Louis gilman right yes that's who i know a very reliable player for them um their their list isn't overly concerning. I think they have big decisions to make with their roster, but it's not necessarily with their expiring contracts. To me, Aloe Gilman has provided an answer for you. He's the guy I'd want back. I agree with you wholeheartedly. So we're four for four in the AFC West. All right. I think we got some challenging things coming up to consider in the AFC North and the South. So stick with us. We're diving into that next. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy? is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring that home, bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. So, Joe, we're going to go to the AFC North next, and we'll start with the reigning AFC North champions, the Baltimore Ravens, who are a team that, like Kansas City, has more than one option. Yeah, uh, but I th I think there's a number of compelling candidates on this list for Baltimore. A number, I'd agree with you. But I think the one that makes the most sense that you got to have back is Justin Matabuik, the interior defensive lineman that was so consistent this year. You've developed him as a draft pick and becoming, you know, this past year one of the best interior pass rushers in the NFL. And I love that his sack production was so consistent. Right, it wasn't like a couple of three sack games or something like that. It was like every week this dude was making impact plays behind the line of scrimmage. There's other names here, but to me, it's just a matter of week. Yeah. So names that are expiring contracts that I think Baltimore would do well to bring back would be Patrick queen. Yep. Uh, one of the guards, uh, probably John Simpson. I think you could get him for a pretty reasonable price. Uh, Zeitler's uh, 30, going to be 34 years old. So maybe, maybe you move on and segue there for, from an age perspective, Jadavion Clowney was outstanding uh, for them this season as well. And then, as you mentioned, Matt of Week is kind of the headliners. I think Matt of Week's the right answer. Uh, I do think it is an interesting conversation um, about snap counts in particular, uh, where you, you do have like Patrick Queen played 96% of the snaps. Mm -hmm. And Matt of Week played 65% of the snaps. So I guess there's there's kind of a conversation of uh, snaps for your buck there. Geno Stone's another low-key, really nice piece to that defense. It's an expiring contract, too, that I don't think I mentioned as well. Uh, I will go with Matt of Week as well, but I, I do think if you were to have the conversation, it's what is the number of snaps that you would have to replace and the cost to do that? I think maybe makes that conversation a little bit more interesting, but Matt of week, I think is the, the most logical cornerstone for the value that he brings as an interior pass rusher. See, in, in my world of like rotational defensive linemen, 65% is like a ton. So 
<laughs> I feel like that's not, not for me. Right. I know. I know we always have this like differing look like in the Ravens are a rotate team. Right. So they, to me, that's a, that's a good amount. Um, I don't want to invoke this name irresponsibly, but you wonder how much not bringing back Patrick Queen or excuse me, not a giving the fifth year option to Patrick Queen and then drafting Trenton Simpson was like, okay, this is our yeah. succession plan. But the impact that you've gotten from Patrick Queen and how well he's paired with Roquan Smith, I don't know that I'd be eager to move on there, especially because that's a young player that's like reaching his peak. And yeah, you know, Baltimore's never been too worried about saying goodbye to players. So I, I'm interested to see how they navigate all this. The Cleveland Browns uh, were the second place team in the AFC North. They were the five seed in the AFC playoffs. Um, not a lot of imposing names on this list either, I think is the good news. No, but there is a name that I think stands out to me, and I know it's an older player, but Zadaria Smith, I know he's 32 years old, but I feel like he was such a nice compliment to Miles Garrett, and you know, this Browns defense was was terrific. And I think when you look at the list and you don't get overwhelmed by the names and you do see the impact that is a Darius Smith made to me, that's where I find myself fixating. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Now I think the conversation gets very interesting with the Pittsburgh Steelers who were the seven seed in the AFC playoffs and snuck in. Um, Am I wrong for leaning into Mason Rudolph here? Oh, I thought about it. I thought about it, but I didn't want you to roast me. Uh, no, because I mean, the, the notable expiring contracts are like Levi Wallace, Shannon Sullivan, I mean, Levi Wallace is the only player that's an expiring contract that played more than 40% of the snaps this season. Yeah. So like, there's not a lot of, of departures coming. And if I'm thinking about Mason Rudolph and what he did down the stretch to kind of invigorate some life in the downfield passing game, obviously they're making a change with offensive coordinator. It sounds like Arthur Smith's going to get the call there for Pittsburgh. So Hope you're ready to buy your Connor Hayward stock uh, for Arthur Smith's Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Uh, I don't think you can just roll with Kenny Pickett's status quo. And Rudolph did some nice things down the stretch. I would be interested in as much quarterback competition as I could get. So Mason Rudolph would probably be my choice of expiring contracts. Thought about him, but I didn't land on him. Uh, I am going to go with Chandon Sullivan slot corner for the Steelers. And my thought process is that I, I don't think they're going to bring back Levi Wallace. And I think Patrick Peterson has told us that he, he just can't, he can't play corner anymore. So you feel like you got an answer in Joey Porter jr. I think Chandon Sullivan as a reasonable slot, like not certainly not a, an above average player, but like as something that can give you some stability in the back end where you could be replacing two or three starters. I yeah. mean, that's where I, I landed, but I thought about Mason Rudolph. I'm not going to lie, but that speaks to Pittsburgh in pretty good shape here with, you know, you got some things to figure out, but it's like, there's a, a daunting list of expiring contracts. Uh, that leaves us with the Bengals as the fourth place team in the AFC North. And you have some big names here. I think there's a right answer. I think the right answer is T Higgins. Yes, I agree. 25 that, year old yeah. star wide receiver. It's part of the identity of your roster construction. 100%. That's exactly what it is. An identity piece for who you are as a football team. And when you've had Joe Burrow healthy the last two seasons, you went to the Super Bowl and you went to the AFC Championship game. So T. Higgins is a big part of that. You know, maybe you can't bring back Boyd, but I'm not. Chase and Higgins, we're rolling with that. I know DJ Reader's a name, but it's T. Higgins for me. Well, and that's a nice point on Tyler Boyd. I mean, Tyler Boyd's average per year was over, it's almost $11 million. So if you let that walk, that that's a good portion of your budget for T Higgins. Yeah. Just give him that money and, and give him a raise and we'll, we'll find it elsewhere. You know, DJ readers an expiring contract obviously suffered the knee injury. So I, they'll probably move on there. I'm not losing sleep over Jonah Williams because the offensive line play didn't necessarily meet the standard that, that met the amount of investment that they've made in it. They'll find they, a right tackle in the first round. Let's be right, honest, right? Like, right. come on. Yeah. That's Joby Woozy. Is, is another you platoon them with Turner anyways, here, right? Yeah. And he's also 29 years old. Yeah. So T Haynes, 25. That's the guy. Totally agree. Houston Texans, AFC South reigning champions. Uh, this is a long list. Yeah. Jim. And what's well, interesting is it's a long list of players that a lot of them signed one year deals coming into this season. Yeah, they they have some names here um, more than I anticipated. Guys that wound up being important for them. 
I, I got it back to Jonathan Grenard as a, a young player. What do you, yeah, he had a lot of sack production. I think him and Will Anderson as kind of your edge duo. I, I like that a lot. And so I'd want to keep that intact. I know there's other names here. Blake Cashman certainly pops for me, but to me, it's Grenard. Yeah, it's, it was either Grenard for me or the other one that I thought about was uh, Dalton Schultz for kind of just his volume in the past game, kind of reasonably priced tight end, a uh, little over $6 million per season. But uh, the value of Grenard as a pass rusher, and and he's kind of come up and glown up there through through that group, um, I think that's the most logical choice for me as well. So I think that's a great call out. For Grenard. Steven Nelson had a really good season as well. It feels like he's just bouncing around like crazy and just keeps on having good one seasons for teams, but um, go with the young pass rusher. All right, so I'm going to plead the fifth here. I don't know who finished second between Indy and Jacksonville because of tiebreakers, and neither one of them made the playoffs, so I can't. I don't just, just pick a team. We'll Jaguars. Do. Let's do Jaguars. Jaguars is easy. It's Josh Allen. It's Josh Allen, yeah. That's And, and Trent Baalke said as much. Josh Allen will be back. Yeah. And it might be a franchise tag candidate there. Yeah. You get that figured out for sure. I don't, there, there's no, I mean, what Calvin Ridley's the other name here. And we already kind of talked about that. If they bring him back, I don't think give up a second round draft pick too. Right. So there's, there's right. stuff there to, to think about. It's Josh Allen here. Yeah. Um, not a lot of other names too, that really jump out other than, you know, you traded for Ezra Cleveland at the trade deadline this year. Um, Ridley, who you mentioned, w- was brought in last season in 2022. But like the uh, one Smoot's a night player, nice player, but he was coming off of an injury this year, and yeah. it's it's just not not Josh Allen. It's that's a young player in the prime of his career and one of the the, the big playmakers that you have now. Indianapolis, this one's not easy. It's not. This one's very no. It's not. Okay. Because I know you're going to tell me it's Michael Pittman and Michael Pittman's an outstanding player. Yeah. Is, is Kenny Moore not the best nickel corner in, in the NFL? He's up there. He's one of the top five for sure. Yeah. Blackman's a nice player too. Grover I Stewart. Think. Grover Stewart. Although he 31 years old, 38% of the snaps. He gets so some injuries, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some more, some workload stuff there, injury stuff, some age stuff versus, Blackman's 26, Pittman's 27, Kenny Moore's 29, Gardner Minshew, Pro Bowl quarterback. I can't. They got, they got, I a, lot can't. Of they got a lot of names here, man. Right, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's Michael Pittman. I, it's, to me, it's the number one receiver. I, I love Kenny Moore, and I think he's really important, and I'm not sure they're living in a world where they have to choose, but for our exercise, they do. To me, it's the it's the number one receiver that's been productive regardless of whatever crap quarterback you put out there. Uh. Uh, I think the fact that the Colts have the cap space that they do makes this easier as well. But if they were a little bit more of a cap strapped team, would there be any merit to a conversation of Kenny Moore being an elite nickel corner for a certain market and Michael Pittman potentially being two and a half times that market in, in a vacuum? Yes. But I have a young quarterback in Anthony Richardson that I need to make sure as a dude. Yeah. So, um, I'll go with Pittman too, but I just want to make sure Kenny Moore gets all the flowers that he can get anytime we have the opportunity to give him his flowers. So a nice bouquet. Here it uh, is. The Tennessee Titans or last place finisher in the AFC South. This one's hard because there's not a lot of great a- answers here. I think it's either Aaron Brewer at center or Aziz Al Shahir at, at linebacker. I'm going to pick Brewer because uh, it's offensive line, young quarterback. I think with um, with the stability that he's given them, and I know that that's a low bar to clear with O line in Tennessee. I feel like maybe that's the direction. But if you if you talked me into Aziz Al Shahir, I, I wouldn't fight you on that. I'll go with Aziz Al Shahir, and I'll also justify it with them having like two and a half million dollars in void money on his contract for this upcoming year anyway. So you might as well just get him under contract and make sure you're not eating a cap hit for nothing for a good player. Touche. Touche. I'll go with she here. The AFC East that's coming up. Kyle and I know that division fairly well. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. So stick with us. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel America's number one sports book. And folks, if you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks and placing some super bets. 
What's my favorite thing about the Super Bowl, though? It's the game. It's not the commercials. It's not the halftime. I, all that stuff's cool. It's about the football. I keep the main thing, the main thing on Super Bowl Sunday. And look, you should too. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. And look, new customers, sign up today because you can get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NFL. We'll go in alphabetical order with the 11 win teams here and start with the one from Western New York, Joe. Uh, I have I have Daquan Jones here. Um, the Bills have Ed Oliver under contract at defensive tackle, and then that's it. So I think that player that that nose tackle is really important for their second level. They have small linebackers in Matt Milano and, and Terrell Bernard. And Daquan Jones is a, is a really good a gap defender, but I think especially important player with with what they have on the second level. Yeah. Um, other play, I think I think the conversation's a little easier when you consider Gabe Davis never taking the next step as a player and kind of getting surpassed by Khalil Shakir as an option in the passing game. Yeah. Uh, Micah Hyde being as old as he is, 34 years old this upcoming season, and then Leonard Floyd uh, being 32 and very clearly saying he's he's going to follow the money. Follow right? the money, baby. Got 10 and a half. You look at him over the last five years, he's probably been like sack production. He's had nine or more sacks. He's been good. So he's I'm following the money, baby. So yep. he's going to do his thing. Uh, takes us to the Miami Dolphins, um, the team that – has a very unenviable list. There's a lot of big names here. And um, I'll be interested to hear what, what your thoughts are. I know we've, we've kind of off air talked about some of this a little bit, but I, I do find myself trending in a certain direction with my thoughts. This is the, this is the hardest one. Cause you could it talk is, me into hard. one. You could talk me into one of the offensive linemen, Connor Williams or Robert Hunt. Connor Williams with the ACL tear late in the season. That that tosses a wet blanket over that whole discussion. Because maybe if he's healthy, I probably go there. Robert Hunt like has been a really good guard and I think certainly in our conversations and you talking about how this run game needs like a physical edge about it, like that's your best piece for that. I, I don't know if I'd want to lose that, but then you also have to me a uh, uh, a foundational player in Christian Wilkins who high impact guy to me, it's there. I, I go I go with Christian Wilkins um, as a culture player, uh, an energy guy, an impact player. I can be talked into a number of different ways. I just, I just feel like the best player is Christian Wilkins, and he's a really good interior rush player and run defender. That's, that's the biggest thing that you said, is the best player is Christian Wilkins. So if you want to make the conversation simple, that's where it goes. I think the challenge is um, this is probably $25 million plus a year conversation at this stage for right. Christian Wilkins. Um, I think for Mike McDaniel, I think for the way that the offense faded down the stretch, I think for the quarterback that you've um, made yourselves committed to, the interior offensive line is more important for the Dolphins than the vast majority of interior offensive lines across the league because of the stature and strengths and weaknesses of the quarterback and also because of the run game dynamics that exist. I think Robert Hunt is a critical and played 50% of the snaps this year, had a hamstring issue that, that popped up on him twice. Uh, he didn't miss a snap in either two seasons before that. It's a pro bowl caliber player on the offensive line. I think there's enough other players defensively in the front, whether it's Zach Sealer, whether it's Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips coming back off of injuries, whether it's some of the playmakers in the back seven, I think you have enough other stuff to work with there where I think you, you get a really imposing to-do list if you let the entire offensive line wipe and have to do it over again. Can I – Can I? let me ask you this question with that. Yeah. Does the injuries to Phillips and Chubb, in addition to like AVG as an expiring contract and the depth on the interior defensive line is mm -hmm. was a need – that that I don't know that pushes me to Wilkins. I hear you, man. I do. Um, 
Well, I, but I, I think about, and this is stuff we've talked about as well. I think about that Shanahan style, and it's like they just seem to figure it out on the offensive line. And I know that Tua to, to maybe changes that, but like, can they figure it out on the offensive line? I, they, I mean, Jake Brendel and John Feliciano I mean, they, and these they, guys are they, figuring they, it out. They figured it out this year. But yeah. what you saw was when rubber met the road and the going got tough, you were really capped in how you could attack opposing defenses and your offense faltered down the stretch. And some of that's because, you know, Waddle and Hill didn't share the field for the final five weeks of the regular season until the playoff game. So I get that element of it, but they, they need more teeth up front. They run into the lowest percent of eight man boxes of any team in the league. And some of that is one, two, but some of that is also confidence and trust in your ability to create that. And if you're not going to do that, then you're going to put up sexy points through November. And then you're going to have to play big boy playoff football. And you I don't think you're going to have the teeth to do it with the, the construction of what they have. If you're just going to get by with the offensive line. That was a good debate. I think that's, that's the team, right? Like not just because we're bills and dolphins people. Like it's, it's the compelling conversation. I think in the AFC, yep. uh, let us know in the comments, what you think about that one. Um, I, I don't, I don't think there's a wrong answer. I think I think we got to the right two in Hunt and Wilkins. I understand both sides. And Williams is an outstanding player, but he wants like top three money at center and is coming off the ACL injury. Yeah. And there's good center options that are be are going to be available to Miami. So I, I expect them yeah. to do it. If they don't get a, a fair price there, I think they'll they'll probably try to reset that position specifically. Uh, the Jets. I pick Bryce Huff, Kyle. I, I think I think he's become That's such tough. an important pass rusher for them, and and the identity of that defense is organic pressure, right? Like and, and the depth of the defensive line and how they can have waves of dudes and and be fresh and get after quarterbacks. I'm I'm not letting that get away. I know Jermaine Johnson has really emerged, and John Franco Myers is a good player, and you drafted Will McDonald in the first round. I don't know what the future there is going to be, but Bryce Huff has come become a really nice pass rusher for you an identity piece for what you are in defensively. I'm keeping that guy. This would be where I make the uh, the joke that Thomas Morstead has an argument for being the most valuable player on this list. He's such a good punter, man. He is a great punter. Um, did you read the athletic story today, by the way? Uh, I read Dane Brugler's athletic story with uh, with uh, Duke Mannyweather about offensive linemen. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. No, it's uh, Diana Rossini and Zach Rosenblatt, I believe it was, put out the uh, – a Jets kind of expose of the culture in that building throughout the, okay. course of the season is very What did good. you learn? Um, they got other stuff to figure out other than just getting healthy at quarterback. Oh, okay. Let's, say that. let's, let's, uh, let's beat the, the Jets drum all off season again. You know, let's talk right. about how they're going to be um, a contender in the AFC. Uh, Bryce, Bryce Huff's a stud. He's 26 years old this upcoming season. That's, that's trendy too, right? Like annoying yeah. how he can yeah. get around yeah. corners. That That's your guy. Which leaves us with the New England Patriots as our last team. And this is another team that has, I think, two really compelling choices. Yeah. Now, there's, there's probably three that you could make, but I think one of them is a little one-dimensional as a player. Josh Uche is a nice pass rusher. But the, End the, of list. the ability against the run is, is kind of limiting, whereas you have Unwenyu and Kyle Duggar as two really, really good options here for them. You probably should pick on Wayne you because of the like Trent Brown's a gone, right? Like, dude, what a horrible end to his. He had a it good season. He was, he was bad this year. But then at the end, like we just like kind of quitting on the team and all that. Yeah. And pissy and stuff. Um, and so you, you, you'd hate to be kind of in this position where you got to figure out both tackle spots. You know, you got some young, young interior players. You feel good there. But I Duggar's like the more dynamic player, right? As a safety, but he's a safety. I had okay coming into this conversation. I had Kyle Duggar written down, but I may have talked myself into Michael and Wayne. You, well, you're gonna pick a quarterback too. Yeah, you got to figure out your offense. I'm so, their defense has been fine. Like you got to figure out your offense. Don't like like is Wayne you their best offensive player? <laughs> like low key, um, probably. And he's like like and not just Patriot standard. He's a good offensive lineman relative to the NFL. Yeah. I, it's Wayne you for me. It's Michael and Wayne. I'm with you. 
That is going to do it for us here today on this episode of Locked on NFL Scouting. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We appreciate you guys checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your day. We will be back again tomorrow to do the NFC side of things. So we hope to see you then.